Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at something that's a bit technical, but which it's really useful to get a good handle on. So if you've watched my tutorials, you'll know that I very often talk about enabling fixed resolution. And I thought I would try to explain what fixed resolution is all about. Now here I just want to focus on what you need to know in order to work correctly with the various filters that use an external image input to distort the things they're being applied to. Things like indent, relief, bump map, refraction and glass distortion, all of which are really useful effects, but you really need to understand fixed resolution in order not to get into trouble with them. So let's start with a definition of fixed resolution. Fixed resolution rasterizes a group to a fixed dimension of your choosing. So what does that mean? Let's talk about rasterization first of all. Usually the size of a motion group is determined by the objects within it. It can be both smaller than the canvas area or much, much larger. In fact, it can be literally infinitely large. And what fixed resolution does is to limit the overall size of the group to a specific dimension. So basically, we're going to be looking at why that's useful. As I'm sure you know, motion handles two different types of element. One of those is images. So this is a photograph. And if I were to take the group containing this photograph and scale it up, as expected, it gets very sort of soft and horrible and we start seeing the component pixels. But the other type of element is made up of vectors. And this can be anything from, for example, this motion text object. I could use the circle tool to create a circle that's also vectors. And I could even import a vector graphics from elsewhere for example, to illustrate a file or something like that. And the difference here is that if we take this group containing these vector elements and we scale that up, you see that those edges stay completely clean no matter how large we go. However, if I were to turn this group to fixed resolution, and you'll notice that there's a, an R there next to the fixed resolution indicating that it's been rasterized, then we come to properties and we scale it, you'll see that it starts to look very nasty. We have these steppy pixels where previously we had those really lovely smooth lines. And that's because when we've now got pixels instead of vectors. And that's what the fixed resolution function is doing. So I'm sure you're saying, well, surely that can't be a good thing. Well, in fact, there are several reasons why it's useful. The first one relates to emitters. And because Emotion's workspace is effectively infinite, an emitter will often end up generating a lot of particles that fly outside the visible canvas area, which are still being calculated, and that can really slow down your max performance. Setting the group containing the emitter to fixed resolution means that only the visible particles will be calculated, and that's really useful. So for example, here I've created this emitter with these circles, and you can see that they fly out of frame. Uh, and if you look at the bounding box of this group, so that's what we're looking at here, this box here is the bounding box of the group. Very quickly, that becomes much, much larger than the frame. So let me zoom out. So we're a second and a half in, and it's absolutely huge, uh, probably larger than I can even show you. But if we set the group to fixed resolution, you can see that now the bounding box is locked to the dimensions of the frame. And that's set by this fixed width and fixed height, which are by default the same as the project dimensions, which in this case are 19, 20, 1080. So then as we scrub through, you'll see that the group stays exactly the same size all the way through regardless of how far out the particles fly. And that has huge performance advantages. The second thing I should mention is PDFs. So PDF content can be extremely large, which is great in terms of resolution. But again, it's not great for memory and performance. 
So to avoid overloading your system, Motion applies a fixed resolution dimension to your imported PDF, as in this example where I've imported the Final Cut manual. But I can come over to the Media tab for this PDF, and I can uncheck the fixed resolution checkbox, and you'll see that I've got nice crisp text. And we can even set the fixed resolution to whatever we want it to be. So I could set the fixed width to 1920, for example, and that now gives me reasonably crisp text, which is because I'm actually in a 1920, 1080 project here. One extra point I want to make here, and that is that by default, as I said, when you import vectors into Motion, whether it's a PDF file or it's an Illustrator file, as in the case of this logo here, it does automatically set it to fixed resolution, and that is going to cause you problems if you even if you scale the object, let's not scale the object rather than the group, and you can see that it's gone all nasty and soft. So you will need to almost always, I think, to turn off the fixed resolution button there, and then you'll get really nice crisp edges like that. So just another thing to bear in mind. But the main reason I want to talk to you about fixed resolution in this tutorial is how it impacts those filters I talked about earlier, and we'll come on to that in a second. So now let's look at something else, and that's what happens to the bounding box of the group when we enable fixed resolution. With fixed resolution off, the bounding box is the combined sum of the bounding boxes of the objects in the group. But notice that when I enable fixed resolution, the bounding box is now determined by the fixed width and height dimensions. By default, these are set to your project dimensions, but you can, of course, use your own values. So if I set the width to 960, the result is a group that's only half the width of the project. However, I want you to notice what happens when I add a blur to our fixed resolution group. I'm going to increase the amount a lot so that you can see what I'm talking about. What's happening is that the blur increases the dimensions of the group. In other words, the blur operation happens after the fixed resolution process. And if we wanted to clamp it back to the original dimensions, we'd have to put the result into another fixed resolution group, just like this. So now let's come on to the real subject of this tutorial, and that's how fixed resolution can help us navigate the minefield of those tricky distortion filters. So I've made a group that contains a normal circle, a feathered circle, a feathered square, and some blurred text. So let's turn off this group with all these objects in it, and let's turn on this group here in which I've imported this photograph. Now, the photograph is 100%, but you'll see from the bounding box that it's actually larger than the group that it's in. And in actual fact, its dimensions are specifically 2048 by 1367. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a bump map filter, so filters distortion bump map, to that image. And first of all, I'm going to try adding the normal circle to the bump map source, like so. And I'm just going to crank up the amount so it's obvious what we're doing. So crank it all the way up to one and zoom out so we can get a better idea what's happening here. So as you can see, the original circle, which was nice and round and small, has been applied to the entire area of the original image and it's now become an oval. So that's obviously no good at all. So let's try moving the bump map to the group instead. And initially nothing changes, but then let's come over to the group and turn on its fixed resolution button. And immediately things are looking a little bit better because it's applying it to the 1920, 1080 area that is my project and the dimensions that we've got therefore for the fixed width and height. So that's a little bit better, but it's not exactly what we want. So to get our bump map to match the original uh, circle, let's come to the group that contains the circle 
and let's use that as the bumper map source and then turning everything else off let's turn on the fixed resolution for the group and now you can see this is exactly right if I turn back on that group you can see that's the size and position of our circle and that's exactly what's happening with our bump map filter. So at this point you're probably thinking you've now learned everything you need to know. Just set both groups to fixed resolution. It's as simple as that. Unfortunately it's not quite as simple as that. It's quite a lot more complicated oddly enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn back on the feathered rectangle in this group here. You'll see where it's sitting there from its bounding box. So let's turn that back on again. And you can see that the result is wrong. So that's my bump map source, and this is the bump map result, and everything's shifted over. So how are we going to fix that? Well, the answer is that we come to this group here, and we add object generators, and we add a color solid. We move it to the back of the group, and we turn it black. So now you'll notice that the bump map source and the bump map image are both perfectly in register. And we've done that by adding that color solid. And in fact, having added that color solid, we can in fact disable the fixed resolution for this group. And you'll see that nothing changes. And that's because the color solid has effectively set the resolution of the group to the dimensions of the project which is the dimensions that this group is expecting. So everything is 19, 20, 1080 because the color solid is automatically set to the dimensions of the project. And that's obviously what we want the dimensions of the group to be. So that's all good. However, watch what happens if I now grab the color solid and I move it off to the side and everything goes horribly wrong. Also, if I had to turn back on that feathered circle there and then move the feathered circle, you'll see that that's pushing everything around, distorting everything. You see that's actually starting to squash it. If I turn the text back on again and then we sort of move that around, everything is just getting mangled. So we can partially solve that by turning the group back to fixed resolution. And now that's almost entirely correct. So if we toggle the, the bump map source, it seems to be in register with a distorted image. But let me just grab that feathered circle and let's just shunt it around. And you'll see that at this point here, it's not actually in sync. And to get it back into sync, what we really need to do is we need to reposition this black rectangle so that it's filling the frame again. So if we reset that and we now toggle those you'll see that everything is indeed perfectly in sync. So that little area of transparency there that we had when that rectangle wasn't centered was still causing us problems. So despite the fact this was set to fixed resolution. So there are a lot of factors here that you have to sort of be taking into consideration. Finally, I'd like to talk about emitters because I mentioned them briefly before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that circle, turn everything else off, and I'm going to come to Object to make particles. And I'm going to make this a sort of rectangular emitter and bump up the speed so they head off out of the frame. So let's just have a look at what they're doing. So they're doing that and obviously they're coming out of the frame and the resulting bump map is looking like that. And that's kind of in sync with what it should be. But if we turn off fixed resolution for this group, you'll see all sorts of strange things. They sort of stay within the banding box, it's, it's very, very odd, and they squish and so on. So that's no good. Uh, it's even worse if we, if we turn off fixed resolution for both groups, it's even worse. So that's why uh, this is actually quite important for if you're using uh, an emitter as, a, as a, a bump map source or one of these other distortion filter sources. So anyway, that is fixed resolution, or as much as you probably want to know about it. So I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much indeed for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.